Here we go. I think we're up and running, are we? It's a gray, gray day in the Saxa here. A gray, gray. It's trying. Oh, I said it was trying to rain. She's got an umbrella. I don't think it's raining yet. It's trying to rain. When I came back from the pool about 20 minutes ago, I didn't use an umbrella. But you can feel this, the water in the air. A bit chilly, a bit gray, and heavy rain forecast for later this afternoon. So. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> carrying an umbrella when it looks like it might rain later. <laughs> okay, let's get this camera view down here. What have we got for cones this morning? Just the usual, I guess, our own cone is sitting there. We've got two in front of our shop. You're seeing the one to the right. There's one to the left. We put, we've sort of marked our territory. Jump, jump, please, no parking here. And so far, it's keeping bicycles out of there and cars. There's deliveries, so the deliveries just ignore those cones and make their deliveries. But uh, for the most part, it works. You know. Nobody really parks on this street or tries to park on this street anyway. Of course, it's illegal and uh, impractical. So. But it's also been keeping the bicycles away. So, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, 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 this is not today's work. Is it understandable? Can you tell what it is? I've been tracing. And actually, this is what I will be doing on stream, not today, because I've still got some other work to do on the, on the surfer, but I will be doing this work on the stream as we move forward. Can you tell what it is? Mika has got it, because she knows. She, he, Mika Salend. Saf Mika Safend? I can't see with the colors here. Mika knows. It's funny, the white balance, you know, you're talking about the white balance. It changes and it looks funny depending on what's in front of it. It's auto white balance, so it's changing as the, as the mood goes by. That's what you get from my hands, I think. Or my hands, whatever. The white balance is what it is, don't worry about it. If you change, if you put different stuff in front of it, it changes. Anyway, anyway, you can see what we're doing. It's going to be a crunch day. <laughs> crunch, not crunch as in time pressure, but crunch as in wood crunch. I was a good boy, and yesterday I got rid of the noisy stuff. You know, the block that we, I don't know how far we got on stream. I pasted this down the other day, and I did a bunch of the cutting. I finished the cutting up later that day. And I did the persuading yesterday while the shop was open. And today it's removing the rest. So it's going to be, for the most part, crunch. Crunch. How should we do this one? Stay in the zone, stay in the visual zone here. All right, what we'll do is tell you what, I know. Let me keep free to move around. I'm going to work with the wider chisels first, getting rid of the stuff inside the oceans. And then once I get it basically cleared, we will start to focus on different zones and I'll get them, I'll get the lens up and we'll focus in closer. But let me stay open for a bit here. Yeah, we got a lot done on this one. I've been busy. The shop Friday was chaos. Well, not chaos, organized chaos. Friday was busy, busy, busy. Morning to night, 14 separate transactions over there at the register. People all day long, lots of explanations. So we were dreading Saturday. We thought Saturday, I probably talked about it in the last stream. We were thinking, given that huge Friday, Saturday was probably going to be just crazy. And it wasn't. It was very, very, very quiet. I think there were four transactions in all, but uh, not too many people in and talking. And then Sunday, we didn't know what to expect either, but Sunday also was about the same Saturday. Uh, a few people in, not too many. So it turns out Friday was a bit of an anomaly, that, that busyness. We don't know, we're just going to take it day by day, day by day, trying to see how we can build this back up. You know. I think most of this work has been done. We've got it pretty much flat. I think it's 
mostly done. I can zoom in closer there. Let's do that. Let's get the lens up. Set me a zone to work on. And then get the camera zoomed in a bit more. Anthony, pull out, push in, right? Pull out, push in. So we go in. Who says you can't teach an old dog? No, if someone says online is a majority of our income. Well, we have our income broken into three groups. One is the shop here, very low these days. Online sales are what we refer to as people buying things from our catalog. But our main source of revenue these last couple of years has been subscriptions. That's also uh, online, I guess you want to call it. But out of our three groups, subscriptions is far and away. It's more than half of our revenue, way, way more than half this last year. And subscriptions means the current series and the back member series. This is why the staff is starting to get nervous because Dave has been, uh, I have been working on next year's subscription series, but there's nothing visible. The staff here, a lot of the staff doesn't know what's going on because part of the preparation for next year has had to be secret a little bit, but uh, it's now going to be opened up. And so a bunch of people here are nervous. They think I haven't actually got good work done on next year's series yet, but we have. We are going to have a spectacular series next year. So. Is the paper out today? It is indeed out. Thank you, Tom, for reminding me again. I'm pretty good at remembering these days. It's the, you know, the alarm clock goes off a few seconds before six. I stagger to my feet, toilet first, of course, and then upstairs to get the paper out. So it's, it's just become, it's part of waking up. So I don't really need to be reminded about it these days, but thank you. Three people printing upstairs today. One is, uh, who is there? I took out three bags. No, I took out three bags for two people. Uh, Sugasan is here. She's working on her group for the November subscription prints, the Tokaido Tomfoolery. And Ayumi-san has two bags up there. She's doing, what is she doing? One group is test printing for Matsushima, the new block set. And I don't know what her second pack is. She just said take out two packs. She left the memo, so I took out two packs. I don't know what the second one is. Oh, I know, yes. On a Bonodori. When she handed in the Bonodori prints last time, most of them were clear and good to go, and they're now on their way to the collectors. But a few of them I wanted her to touch up a couple of the colors. So she's put the Bonodori prints, a uh, group of them, she's put them back into her pack, and she'll be touching them up. Well, I haven't seen the vegetable man, vegetable man yet. He may have come and gone, or he may be on his way. I have no idea. Sometimes I see him on the way back from the pool. Sometimes we see him in the stream. Sometimes I see him after the stream is over.
The paper, yes, the one day there, yeah. Yeah, it's okay to mention it, it's fine. Because like he said, the one day you won't mention it, that's the day I forget. We've had that before, actually, right? I, you did mention it, and I had forgotten, and I ran upstairs quickly to take it out. So it's better. It's better to keep mentioning this paper out, paper out. Talking about splinters, this is actually the only time of the job where it sort of is actually possible to get splinters, and it does happen bit by bit. You can see what I've done here. I know I cut, for example, let me, let me zoom in here. Where's a pointer? We cut with the chisels out like this, and sometimes the end of these pieces of wood like this are a little bit sharp, and I haven't got to cleaning this yet, so there's a little bit of a sharp end there. And what I'm doing here is I'm rolling along at other places, push, push, wipe, wipe, push, push, wipe, wipe, push, push. And sometimes I go like this, wipe, wipe. And it would be the sharp end there might catch. So I have. It's not like somebody saying David never gets splinters or the robot is saying this. We do, of course, because sometimes that would be sticking up. And if I wipe a bit too much, boom, there it goes. And I've rubbed right onto a point of wood. So it does occasionally work if there's a splinter there. No big deal, but... Uh, Right there, just doing that, rubbing across the wood. There's lots of little places here. It could be, there could be a splinter here, for example. If I rub too carelessly, I'm gonna catch a splinter there. I had my little note. I made a note the things I was supposed to remember to, to chat about today. <laughs> trivial, trivial, trivial. If it's obvious or if it's relevant or whatever, but clearing these things, I've got a curve like this. The, the wood grain, of course, is running this way. We've got wood we're going to keep, and then there's wood that's being taken away. And to get rid of the wood around the outside of that curve, I don't know if, if you, you've noticed, whatever, it doesn't matter. Over here, I started coming from this side, going up the curve. So the wood, when I push the chisel, if it slips or slides, it slides away from the wood I'm being keeping. So I came up to the halfway point and wouldn't keep going this way. Because even though now, even though it looks like I'm pushing and it's going to go away from the wood, the wood grain is running this way. And if I tried to pull this out this way now, it's not going to come easily. It's going to split inside into the wood that I'm keeping. So I started at the back, came up to the halfway point, then switch swing around, and I'm going to come up the other side. So we're always pulling away the wood away from the wood to be received on an outside curve like this. And on an inside curve, we did it the other way. I started at the middle, and I worked up outside, so it's splitting away. It's not splitting in. If I had done it this way, started here, it splits into the retained wood.
I don't know. I mean, it's obvious when you're doing it, or it's not obvious. I don't know. But there's you've got to keep moving around and around. The idea that the block was never rotated. That's when we were talking about the actual cutting knife. Clearing, absolutely it has to be rotated. You have to work so that the split, so that the, the, the wood paring away comes away from the wood to be retained. Any updates on the microphone stuff? Do we have problems today? I'm using the Roland USB interface, which seems to be the, the least trouble. And I haven't seen anybody complaining at the moment about you know, the buzz and the hum. That seemed to be coming from the newer microphone that I tried the other day, the other week. At the moment, I think we're okay. Did I get the new expensive one to work? No, I just put it aside. I know just every report I got from it was that it was making some high-pitched frequency sound. So that's it. It's just gone in its box and it's out of the way. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, I don't know if I'm using it wrong. Now, there's been comments and talk, get a preamp and get professional XLR mics and stuff like that, but my God, the, the equipment and gear around this workbench, you know. Okay, so that one's clear. We cleared inside from the U and then outside around it. Which way should we go? Let's move back into this stuff. And again, this is the, on the U inside. So I'll start at the base of the U and work up. But it's complicated by the fact that this has its own curves. So it's downhill, uphill, downhill, uphill. We start at the base. Did I look on YouTube for review videos? No, I haven't. I'm sorry, I didn't look into it that much. I just bought it assuming it would work. It doesn't, so I've put it aside. I'm probably doing it wrong. It's usually the case. asking about the mic. The mic that we put in that, that gave all the humming and hissing trouble was this one. We put a new battery in it and this was the one that seems to have that some kind of a high-pitched noise. And part of the problem is the connectors, you know. The new one has the four, the one I'm using now has a three, but when I put this in I used a four to three conversion cable. This was the one that gave us the high-pitched we squealing, squealing or whatever the.
time was the last time I shaved. I don't remember, you know. I don't remember. It would have been when I left the music store, I guess, 1978, 79. I don't remember, honestly. Somebody says, I've had my beard longer than this person's been alive. It was funny. I, I came across something like that yesterday, you know. At the end of the weekend last night, I was doing a little bit of the bookkeeping. I know at the end of the month, we've got end of the month routine we have to run. And one of the new routines for us, now that the shop is open, at the end of every month, we'll have to do this at the end of October, is the, the cash, re cash register, the, the register system we're using here, is a software company in Japan called Smart Register. I didn't, I'm not so stupid as to try and write our own cash register software. I don't need to do that. There's commercial solutions for that. So we have this thing called Sumareji. It's a Japanese company that has built cash register software. We used to use the Square system up until well, when the shop was previously open, but we can't use that anymore because Square, the company, has good software for this but they haven't updated their software for the new Japanese tax laws. The Japanese system of tax-free, uh, the Japanese tax-free system has changed the, the, changed how it works in the past couple of years. And whereas before tax-free used to be a sheet of paper you'd write on and put in the person's passport, then the tax inspector at the airport looks at it, blah, blah, blah. It's now completely electronic. When somebody who wants to buy here tax-free with no sales tax, when they buy something, we have to have their passport, and that opens up, and we shoot a picture with our Smart Deji software, we shoot a picture with our, our iPad, which the software is running, and that connects their passport data with that sale. So this is how we can show why didn't you charge tax on it, because it was a foreigner. And then it's click, 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 and when they're checking out of the airport, it's all automatically processed, and the tax department is happy because they know those goods left with that passport they left overseas. Anyway, long story short, to get, because the passport data comes in, blink, we get a copy of the person's data, their name, their birth date, their passport number, all stuff. Now, we do not want to be anything like uh, holding this kind of data, so we don't. So it goes straight through to the I know, cash register company that holds it in their cloud. They're the ones that are responsible for it. It's, of course, sent directly also to the tax office, but I do not want sitting here in my database anything like names, addresses, stuff like this, uh, uh, passport numbers of people who have visited this shop. So this is automatically deleted from our system. We don't keep it. And this happens and we, we go through this at the end of every month. It's all, all deleted automatically. And what I did yesterday, because this is brand new for us, I'm testing how to work this and how to run this. So it's not the end of the month yet, but I'm getting ready for this. It's the first time we've done this. We opened October 1st. We're doing our first tax-free sales under the system, and I want to make sure this system is working. So I pulled up the data yesterday and, and did, hit, did the deletion thing for this first batch of data for the first, for the first month. And the, thing, the stuff comes up on a spreadsheet on my screen, the names and passport numbers and 
birth dates and passport blah 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 of all the people who bought stuff from us and bang it gets deleted. But it's all there, all with birth dates. And so the, the, the birth date of everybody who did a tax-free sale in our shop is there on my screen for a few minutes and I'm looking down this list. Brrr. Nobody, nobody even close to my age, not even close. I'm a 195, there were a couple of 196, 1968, 1969, then it was a bunch of 197s, 198s. There were even some 20s. <laughs> So among that group of people, the people who have bought prints from us in the last month, I am the oldest person. So. Sometimes I'm not sure what you're asking here. Do I already know how to solve all kinds of prints you do? Or do you still produce some kinds of sketches, tests to solve something? I'm not quite sure what you're asking. I know. I'm not quite sure what you're asking. I know. We do proofing when we get a set of blocks finished. When this set of blocks are finished, making the print will not be automatic. What colors we're going to use, how we mix them, how they will overlay is absolutely not automatic. The set of blocks is hopefully close to what we need to make the print. It may or may not be exactly what we need. So there's testing and proofing. I'm not quite sure what you're asking. I know. That whole data security thing is such a drag. You know, we really do not want to be involved with it at all. We don't want people's data. We, you know, we take orders over the internet, so we've got their name and we've got their address, so the prints can go out to that person to that address, and that stays in our database. So we've got names and addresses. <coughs> what we don't have and we don't keep is financial stuff. We don't keep credit card information. That's the outside payment processor. We don't even know it to start with, let alone store it. So I don't know, are we going to see some news reports somewhere down the line? Giant database hack, Mocha Hong Kong hacked, data leaked all over the internet. What's going to leak? Well, the only thing that can leak is the, the name and address of people that have bought stuff from us. We don't have anything else. So, so if, that's, if that's totally sensitive data, I don't know. We do need to keep that, of course, to be able to send the prints and subscriptions, of course. We need to know the name and address. So. But that's all we keep, you know. Moko Hong Kong hacked. And I'll have to go on TV and do the Japanese thing where the, the company owner bows to the to the TV crews and the and the and the and the internet says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I will take a reduction in salary for the next six months. And all that stuff. <laughs> I missed a fluffy dog. Whatever, I've seen lots of fluffy dogs here. Did I miss one? I don't care. <laughs> Probably the fluffy dogs you've missed are the ones that come by in baby carriers. There is lots of that the weekend. We see it all the time, especially on the weekends when it's crowded here. There'll be a couple walking down the street pushing a baby carrier, and you get closer and you can see it ain't a baby in there, it's a dog or a couple of dogs, or there's two dogs in the baby carrier eagerly looking out around at the world around them, you know. There's lots and lots and lots of that. I could, we could guarantee that. If you come to, like I'm gonna say it sucks, that's all I know, but if you come to Tokyo on a weekend when people are out for walking, and stand at any street corner, you will see baby carriages with little doggies. One of the girls here, I forget who it was, maybe it was what Nabisan, we were chatting about this, you know, and she says, Dave, you don't realize there's, a, there's another reason for, for people to do this, you know. Because I'd been saying like, what are you doing putting a dog in a baby carriage? I mean, give me a break, you go for a walk with a dog. Put the dog in a baby carriage, it doesn't get the benefit of a walk. And she says, no, 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 no. Lots of people have dogs who are in apartment buildings where it's not permitted. 
And the only way to get in and out of the apartment building is you put the dog in the baby carriage, close the flap on the top, and out you go with your baby. <laughs> People don't know you've got this little dog. <laughs> and I'm like, is that really why they're doing this? And she says, well, whatever. That's one of the reasons why people do this. So, so, so yeah, I guess so. You know, this, this guy is your dog as a baby. I don't know. <laughs> so, someone's got it. I heard your baby barking last night. <laughs> Is it a boy or a girl? I can't tell. <laughs> In fact, the way she told me that story makes me think that actually probably she and her husband are doing the same thing. <laughs> and because I had been really against this, she's sitting there hearing Dave Dave's making noise, these people with these dogs and their baby buggies and stuff, but she's sitting there, probably she's doing this, but she can't talk about it now. What have we got here? Dave will be bidding for the Sharak print coming up at Bonhams. Oh, no, he won't. <laughs> oh, no, he won't. Oh, no, he won't. That's out of my, it's out of my pay grade. It's out of my interest grade. And I don't trust it anyway. I absolutely don't trust it. Soka Hoksai's birthday is coming up. One of his birthdays, there's, there's real discussion on which it's this one date or this date. No, I, haven't, I didn't even remember. No, I didn't think about it. No, sorry. There's also, when you're talking about uh, dates in, in Japanese history related to what the date is these days, there is a massive, massive problem with this in that you can't line them up. And that's because, you know, there was adjustments. We have this Gregorian calendar adjustment in the West. I don't remember, sorry, it's been a long time since I read about this again. I, when I was doing my poet series, Shunsho, the artist there, his birthday and when this print was, this book was published was a big deal of research. So I knew the story back then, I can't remember it now. It was in the, you tell me, look it up, late 1700s or early 1800s or something, the Western calendar went through a big click, click adjustment. I think it was the, it was something to do with the Gregorian calendar thing. Part of Europe had changed to one calendar, part hadn't changed, it was an Orthodox calendar. And then the, the European part, England, France, Germany, whatever, that made the switch, they had to switch to catch up and they lost like 13 days. So there was a 13 day inter, calorie, calendar -y. Someone look it up, I can't remember the story. Anyway, the point being, when you adjust, when you're looking at 1919 reflects to this date in Japanese history and the 1979, and back when these books were published, back when Hokusai was born, whatever it was, whatever, 1782, he's born, whatever, this is before that adjustment. So you've got the dates when Hokusai was born adjust to the Western calendar such and such a date. The date when, say, Hokusai died adjusts to the Western calendar such and such a date. But in between, there was, on the Western side, they dropped 19 days or 13 days or whatever the story is. So all of these dates, now you talk about what's Hokusai's birthday, are you counting before those 13 days, not including those 13 days? It doesn't make any sense to try and line these things up day by day because you can't actually do it or you just define your terms. We're going to ignore those 13 days or we're going to pretend they didn't exist. I don't, I don't know if it's 13, it's 13, 19, 17, something like this. People can uh, kind of look this up. So when you're saying Hokusai's birthday, which day is it? All of these things, when you relate back to an earlier date in Japanese history, it doesn't match. 
and I wrestled with all this at the time because I was trying to get involved with my book and I was trying to do something on Shun Cho's birthday or I was trying to figure out the actual date that the book was published, blah, 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 blah. And you couldn't line it up. It became a question of definition. Are you going to include those extra days or not include those extra days? I'm sorry, I don't remember it well enough to be able to explain it to you clearly and cleanly, but there, there is a thing there. And if you're, if you're curious about that, you can look it up. So. Can somebody find that? How many days did they drop? They dropped days, right? They skipped. They went from like a January 2nd to January 21st or something like this. They skipped a whole bunch of days. So that's why when we talk about things like Hokusai's birthday, okay, and it becomes more of a, it's just a, a, let's just think about his thing and think about his birthday, but it's not, here we are, it's stroke of midnight, countdown, three, two, one, hi, it's Hokusai's birthday. That has no meaning whatsoever, absolutely whatsoever. So we can recognize it, and maybe we should recognize it, but uh, we're just picking a random date almost. And that's on top of the fact that even here in Japan, ignoring the Western calendar change, even here in Japan, his birth date is listed from two different sources as being a different number. So even the Japanese historians are not lined up on what day in our calendar is his birthday. But yes, it's a good point, and we should uh, recognize this. Maybe we can do an Insta post and go down and say hello to the guy. Because I am going to need his permission again next year. I am going to need it. I need his cooperation again. Again. Is it 13 days? Well, somebody dropped 11 days, someone dropped 12, someone 13. So, <laughs> this happened in when? 1752, 1872. It's fun, no, no, until you're programming. My God. Blah, 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 blah. inside my own systems, <coughs> the ones we build here, my own software and stuff. It doesn't have to deal with dates back in 1792, so I just use Unix time as our, our own our own database, you know, uh, as the unifier inside our database. We just collate everything to Unix. But for historians, my God, whatever. talking about the cash register software, you know, the, the sale happens in the shop here, and we, we use the cash register API, and it communicates the data to our management system, and in Unix time, we just use the Unix time. Someone's asking, do you have any plans of making prints of the dream of the fisherman's wife? Hmm. Hmm. Hmm.
Oh, someone's got it. Someone's beat me to the link. Someone is linked. Be careful of that. That you know, URL that people just typed is a not safe for work URL. It's not safe for work. Please be careful. That link is the print you're talking about. So if you're at work and your boss is looking over your shoulder, it's best if you don't visit that website at the moment right now. Yeah, ClickSpring, of course. I follow that. I eagerly await each new one. He's, a, he's insane. That guy is just wonderfully insane. Love him. Absolutely love him. I'm full of admiration of what he's done. He, he just blows me out of the water. It's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. The everything, the, the build quality of what he's doing, the craftsmanship, the video production, he's just incredible. He's incredible. He blows me right out of the water and I happily, easily admit that. He's incredible. I don't even know his name. All I know is the, the name of the channel. You know. When I see that, I'm in, I'm in the presence of a true master. Absolutely. I'm a hacker. That guy's a master. I'm just lucky that no one of his level of skill and, uh, and ability to dig in and do things properly. I'm lucky that no one of that level has come along in the woodblock field yet. So. <laughs> Yeah, look at this plywood. Yes, yes, yes. And what happened with this is the the cherry is thin. It was really thin. It was about three millimeters. I know, uh, I, when I took this from Aoyama San, he said, it's a bit thin. And I'm like, well, okay, whatever can't be helped. And he said, no, it's kind of thin. And I looked at the edge of it. It's kind of thin, isn't it? What happened? And he said, when they, when they went to the planer to try and get it planed, he leaves about six millimeters. It goes to the planer. He tries to dress it down to about five. But this one has, you've seen it. It has grain going this way and that way. And the guy ran it through the planer this way. Oops. He turns it around, runs it through the planer. Oops. It goes both ways. So by the time we got it shaved flat, we had shaved more, shaved more, shaved more. So this is a very thin piece of cherry. And you're going to see this is, I can't say it's amateur work because it just depends on, on the, 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 the material here. But yes, we've gone through in ways that we normally don't do. You normally don't see the plywood base on, on any of the blocks on this stream. You don't see it. And we're sort of proud of it. No, I don't need to carve that deep. But this one, it's only three millimeters and I have had to go that deep. So sorry about that. Things are what they are. It won't make any difference in the printing. No, of course not. No, no, absolutely no. Forth. It's the, so it's this whole corner, the wood grain is wrong both ways. No matter which way I try to dig it out, it chips. Can't be helped. No complaint, just uh, deal with it. That's my job, just deal with it.
Well, we are, and Stephen's talking here, we are taking the skim cuts. Of course, when I said we ran it through a planer, this, the point that we were talking about there was when it's been through the thickness planing, <coughs> it's at the right depth. We sent it to him about six. And then we are, we are shaving at that point. I don't know the name of the machine. It doesn't cut with a rotary blade, it it's cuts with a knife. Our block gets pushed through the machine and there's a single blade underneath which slices, taking microscopically fine, I don't know, not microscopically, but very, very fine shavings. But even there, this block was so recalcitrant, it just went through back and forth, back and forth, kept breaking off each time. I think at the end of the day, they just gave up and sent it back to Aoyama-san, and he simply sanded it down to the last level of uh, flatness, because we couldn't, the, the grain was so backwards, we couldn't uh, cut it down. Yeah, it was a problem piece of wood, and I, it, we, we kept it because we knew we could use it, but if the job had involved, for example, keeping the surface of the wood clean, if, if keeping this in one piece had been a, an important factor, we would have just had to reject this piece of wood. We wouldn't have continued with it. I kept it on and kept going because we are really short of wood these days, and the top surface, the surface that we're going to print from, was acceptable. The fact that the grain is difficult to, to cut at the trimming stage here, it, it's just it's just awkward for me, but it doesn't affect the finished result. So. But yeah, if we were trying to use the, that surface, we would have had to cut and run. Yeah, I should have planted cherry trees 50 years ago. Tell me about it. But we should be planting them now. Going by the same theory, going by the same concept, we should be planting them now. It's the old story. When's the best time to plant trees? A generation ago, when's the second best time to plant trees? Today, you know, I should be perhaps doing more of this, so. How's our time? Still okay? Good.
you can hear the sound difference. Now, as usual, anytime you get a, the wood has bad grain, it's because there's a knot nearby. It's quite common. I can't see actually where the knot is. Maybe it's in the part that was just cut off up here. And nearby the knots, another thing is the, the wood in and around a knot is rock hard. And you can maybe hear the sound difference here. This wood in this little area here is very hard, very brittle. And the grain direction is all over the map. So it's just simply there was, there was a knot <coughs> somewhere around here. I can't see it. It might have been here. It might have been up in, in the air here. There was a knot. Right there, rock hard. Has it started to rain out there? Ugly, can't be helped. Where to? More here. Does it rain in Mokohankan? It does indeed rain in Mokohankan. It rains in my room up at the front. It rains on the third floor at the back. There's a few places where it rains in here. We don't have buckets on the floor. I have a catcher on my desk, just where I sit on my desk with my computer upstairs. You've seen me, there. it's in the videos, that corner. It rains in that corner. It comes pouring down the wall on, on typhoon type rainy days. Nothing will come in today, but when it's heavy, heavy, heavy rain, it comes in, yes. The landlady just shrugs her shoulders, so there's nothing we can do about it. The work to, to do to stop that would be impossible. The buildings here, our building is stuck to the next building. Ayano-san is here, Ayano-san. Our building is stuck to the next building, and somewhere in that stickiness is a leak, and it leaks for the guy next door, it leaks for us. We can't fix it. I can tell him, tear your wall down so we can fix our leak. It doesn't work like that, because the buildings are stuck together. There's nothing we can do. Ayano-san, so. What's this coming in and putting the light on right away back there? Are you going to work back there today? Oh, you're wiping your eyes, so, so, so. So let's ask her, how was your weekend? <laughs> um, let's get I a report. I to get out to Bantica. Go, 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 go,
for how long it would take to get there by bike. So by bike. Bicycle. You're talking about your yeah, bicycle. bicycle. It's an hour and ten minutes by train. An hour and three minutes. So I was like, why not bike? So I took bike and. Got but it. but but just a minute. The bike is causing part of the problem here, right? No. I didn't know that, but it turned out that that was causing the problem. <laughs> She's had, prob she's had problems with her wrist, back story. She's had a few problems with her wrists or fingertips. She's been to a doctor and she's been to an acupuncturist. So, 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 so isn't it? So did he what? He stuck needles in your hand today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not just hands, but like my back and in my, I don't know, my belly and in my legs as well. Do I want to hear this? Yeah, it doesn't hurt at all. If he gets the points that are causing the problem, you feel like, something stinging your 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 skin mm -hmm. but it doesn't hurt that much it's not scary at all the point is like it was such a bad idea to ride your bicycle <laughs> and I wanted to give up on my way to the Akipankachu place mm. I was already tired in mm. Shinagawa I needed mm. to go to mm. Otaku mm. I wanted to give up but the time was coming I was mm. like I couldn't mm. give up mm. so I just mm. pushed myself mm. that was such a bad Mm. Yeah. So did, did you tell him you took bicycle there? Or? Yeah, and my hand was actually okay that morning. By the time I got there, my hand was like shaking like this <laughs> from the shock mm. from the bicycle. Mm. But then you had to go home also. <laughs> so <laughs> Yesterday I, I was a nice day. Yesterday was a nice mm. day. Such a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I liked it better when she told stories about going bouldering and hiking with her boyfriends and stuff like this. This was more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't so want to hear stories. So, 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 so. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm comparing medical stories <laughs> with a 20 year old employee here, you know. So, so let me it. tell you about my last operation. <laughs> 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 Online over the weekend, it was okay, steady, but not so, you know, not a tsunami. You've got a bunch of work to do, you know. So, listen, how was the, the shop? The shop was working. Friday was busy, 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 busy. Right. Saturday was quieter. Sunday was quieter. So, it hasn't so been this much. I've processed all the shop stuff. Thank one is on your, me. it's in your pending. One okay. is on the box. So, and there's one to pick up here Hi. from from upstairs. So, I've done this part. The rest is up to you. Okay. 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 <coughs> Sometime today, I'd like to have a li little, here's a dreaded word at Mokohankan. I'd like to have a little meeting. <laughs> you are the person who doesn't like me. I know, I know, I know. That's what I said. I know. What I need to do is I need to settle on the size of the paper for next year's print. So I got it. Ah, okay. And we've had different sizes of envelopes. So I've got to, I want to get some data from you, what you've got so far okay, about okay, this. Okay. Meeting. Yeah, or no, because the problem is that no, until we settle on the envelope size, I can't decide the paper size. Until we set the paper size, Chonsan can't get started carving. We're both tracing, getting ready for it, but we can't actually start carving until the paper size is decided, until the envelope size is decided. So it's all, we're waiting. It's all her fault. <laughs> I thought I gave you the envelope samples already. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I might have to go to, I have to go on Wednesday. So, 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 Okay. Okay, looking forward to the meeting. No, I just mean I, I need to get some information on the envelope size. That's all. I don't want to be. Okay, this. Excuse me for the sidetrack. Excuse me. Being an employer of people, you know, it's there's a thing about it that's difficult for me. Well, lots of things are difficult. But one specific thing makes it really difficult is when you have a certain belief about what something is going on. She's got pain in her wrists, and to Dave here, I know exactly what's happening. She has got her computer at a bad angle. We've asked her to change it. She's got her wrists up like this, and she's been typing like all day long. To me, this is a no-brainer. This is what's wrong here. She doesn't see it this way. She's been to her acupuncturist and he sticks needles in her back and you know whatever but what do you do? This is what she believes and her culture believes. Dave thinks something else. So you've got a discrepancy in the way you approach something. In normal life it wouldn't matter. I'm in my sphere, I behave my way, she's in her sphere, she behaves her way. But I'm her employer here. So there's a different relationship here and I'm in no way, this is Japan, 
I'm not able to dictate what's happening here. She's dictating what's happening here. But I think, whatever, you can see the, this, the situation. So I'm not allowed to actually change the thing that I think should be changed to, to do this, you know. She's cooperating a bit. She says, oh yeah, that might be something to do with it. So she has. She has now laid down her keyboard. She's using an iPad on a stand with a little keyboard. And now she's got the keyboard flat on the table. So she is cooperating with me to the extent that, well, okay, I'll go along with you, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But it's, it's sticky. It's a sticky, difficult situation. Who's this? Someone just left with a big bag of stuff. What's going on? It's not garbage day today. What are they doing? It's not garbage day, guys. What are you doing? あのね、今夜出すんでしょ。今夜出す。ずっと1日中店の前にその広いゴミ出したくないです。あの、スーパーさんとトゥデイウズザガーベッジ。はい、違うんでしょ。はい。And Yeah, the mouse gun. What they did, they, 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 we have plastic garbage containers upstairs. People open the plastic lid, drop the garbage in, and big. It's big. It's 45 liter boxes. And the normal deal is on garbage day, you take the plastic thing out of there, wrap it up, and put it outside. They took it out two days early, and it's been sitting upstairs, and they've got some food scraps in there, and the mice, every night, the mice have been nibbling at that, that bag of garbage. And I'm like, you should have, shouldn't have taken it out of the big plastic container up there, but whatever. So there's nothing upstairs going on that shouldn't be easily fixable. Keep the garbage in the big container until we're ready to throw it out.
and now they're all like, we should call a special company and get the rats out and stuff like this. And I'm like, there wouldn't be a problem if you didn't leave your garbage outside. But How are we doing? Time, 9.09. We're still good for a while. Hi. Okay, today for show and tell, I know a couple of ways we could go. We could look some more into that envelope of prints. It's still sitting here right behind me here, the prints that we got the other day from auction. I guess we'll just look through that a little bit more. I'm not quite sure what's in there all the way to the bottom. It might be just a lot more of the same thing that we've seen, so I'm not sure how interesting it is, but uh, let's poke through and see a bit more. This is really picky picky work here, you know, and it's really picky and it's really easy to go a bit the wrong way and chip off. Anytime we've got design like this, with lots of these long thin things sticking up, it's really easy while clearing around them to knock off the top of one of these things. So this is really picky, not so much fun, and especially when we've got wood grain that's uh, like it is today, it's kind of recalcitrant. This is, this is an uh, easily mistake. Yeah, picky, picky, picky. Okay, anyway, that corner's done, I think. That central area now is all done. We've been all the way around this stuff. There's an outlier here, not done yet. This corner is not done yet. And there's another big zone here, not done yet. Let's zoom out, you can see what's going on. It's Pull out, push in, pull out. Got it, got it. 
Got it, got it, got it, got it. So there's the overview. The other side of this piece of wood is the first blue block. And we have transferred some of this information to this second face. This will be blue level number two. We have two more standing by, already transferred. They're not colored on. I'll have to get my red marker. We will pick up the idea, the places here that will be blue level three. And we do the same thing all over again, take off everything else. And then the final block will be blue level number four, just the last ones here that are the darkest, strongest ones. And everything else will come off. So there's a bunch of work still to do here. One thing you didn't see the other day when I pasted these down off stream, <laughs> we had another pull out, push in. We had another one of those patches where when I was pulling off the uh, peel, I rubbed a bit too hard. And remember the other day I had not enough glue and it peeled off a patch? This was too much glue. And this area was a wet, wet, wet. So when I was peeling off the back, it just dissolved. There was so much water underneath it. It doesn't matter because that's not a zone we'll be using for area number four. Pull out, push in, pull out, push in. Okay, there's our blocks. For our show and tell today again, let's take another look into this little bag of treasures that came. I know I have to admit, when yesterday, when Kawaii-san was here, our carver, Kawaii-san, the guy who's been doing the Miyakodori prints, if you got that most recent Miyakodori print, the one designed by Atelier Sento, that was printed by our printer Kawaii-san, Mr. Mr. Kawaii. We have two Kawaii's, uh, a Mrs. and a Mr. This is Mr. Kawaii. He was in here yesterday. He com came with me today to work in the shop rather than print every day, every day, every day. He does some days in the shop here. So he was here in the shop. So he and I yesterday were looking through this. So I have now gone through to the bottom of this to see what's in here. And uh, it's sort of more of the same, although there are some, some surprises as we get down the pile. We're not going to do the whole thing. Let's just look through again. Let's take out the ones that we saw already. We saw these the other day. We saw this stuff. Going down here, there are going to be a lot more. These are the prints from the, I guess, late Meiji or Taisho era. They are made on very, very thick, very heavy paper. And they're printed with massive amounts of gohun, white powder. They're opaque pigments. Let's look at a couple more. And in fact, let me, let me dig down here. Here we are, this one. Let me dig down. Because this one, again, shows us that this group of prints came from a, a printer's workshop. These are not prints that were out in the world. They were not prints that were sold at once upon a time, and we're now finding these prints were never sold. They are proof copies from a printer's workshop or a publisher's office, somewhere like that. Oh, I think there's no light. Do we need the light on or the light off? What's better? Not sure which is best here. I'm saying Taisho, I'm not really sure. Taisho, probably Taisho into early Showa. In fact, if I if I was if you're going to quote me, quote me as early Showa on these rather than Taisho. I think these are 1920s, somewhere around there. Let's zoom in a bit of this, and you can see there's scribbles all over this. And these are this is a test print, a proof that the printers have done, and it has come back to somebody who has scribbled all over it. And it's the same as the one we saw yesterday. Most of the scribbles are the same thing. It says, Usuku. And I think what he is saying is, this is too dark and he wants it lighter, Usuku. It might be telling us that it is too light, but I think he would then say, Usui. It will be too light. So he's saying, Usuku, make it lighter. And we see that same comment all over the place on these prints. We saw it the other day and we see it here. Then we have a really, really interesting one. Me and Kawaii-san yesterday, we looked at this. We can read it. 
and it says kirei ni. Kirei is a beautiful, pretty, nice. And ni, kirei ni would be an instruction. Do this more beautifully. Do this more nicely. It's not acceptable the way the guy wrote it. Kirei ni yatte kudasai. Don't do it like that. Me chak chak. Show more. Kirei ni yatte kudasai. Do it properly. And whether he means the birds, the water, the whole thing overall, I don't know what he's talking about. But there it is, circled for emphasis. Do it more prettily. Do it more beautifully. Skoshi koku. Too deep. He's saying it's too deep here. And here again, usuku. It's the same comment all over the place. This is koku, meaning more. Make it darker. I don't know. No idea. No idea. What I would love to have, and I don't have it for this one, I would love to have another example of the print, one that would show what the finished result was actually published like. And one day we may indeed run across such a thing, but at the moment I don't have one for comparison. And that would be really cool to have this printer's proof with these little marks on it and then have the final published version for comparison and then we can really see what he's getting at. Some of them he's got skoshi usuku. Just tone it down a little bit, make it a little bit lighter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Kibishi ne. Actually this is just like Dave. When we do our own test printing upstairs this is exactly what I'm doing. I don't actually write it all over our prints. I sit next to the girls and they look at it. They've got their own notes written on it. And I, I do the same thing with them. The same thing, absolutely. So for me, this is a treasure. This is absolutely a treasure. We got this batch of prints thinking that some of them would go into our flea market for sale. There is no way this is leaving this building. Absolutely no way this is leaving. So I'm sorry, anybody thinking out there, they will wait for this to come up into our uh, flea market. You're going to wait a long, long, long time. I hope you throw in now, this is beautiful. Of course, they, 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 we're not shooting at people. The point being, someone is going to be the decider on these things. The, the printer and or the designer have prepared it this far. And somebody is the decider. Now maybe the decider here, I'm saying it was the publisher, but perhaps not. Perhaps there's a group of printers working together, and one guy is the boss. He's the boss of the room. And this would be passed to him, and he would say, yeah, pretty good, very nice, okay, but here you go. And he would write these things on it, because that's his job. So there's nothing you know, dramatic or awful happening here. This is a normal part of our work that happens with every single print we publish. What I should do, you know, tell you what, if somebody can remind me this in an email, let me do this. I'll get it ready before the next stream, Next stream's Thursday. Before the next stream, let me go upstairs to the printer's room and just get, uh, grab in the garbage can and just grab some of the sheets from next month's print that have similar comments like this. And that would be cool to show you how it back and forth. Here it was a hundred years ago and what we're doing today. That would be fun. We're not showing anybody all up. You know, we're not, there's, nobody's done anything wrong here. At some point, somebody is the decider. Maybe, I don't think it's the case, but maybe it was the designer who was back in the room there. The printers have done this. Maybe this has been a proof sent out to the designer, and he's written his little comments on it and sending it back. Maybe. We have no way to tell who wrote these things. One of the printers the publisher, the boss, or perhaps even the designer. No idea. Someone's found a copy of this, has it? Okay, then I will very, very, uh, very much have a look at this to compare. Thank you. KG has a link. Okay, I will look this up. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will, with great eagerness, dig in there and look it up. 
By the way, you've got a copy. What's the date? Did somebody have a date on this then? 1920s, 1930s? Did somebody have a date? It's not Taisho. It's post-Taisho. I'm sure it's post-Taisho. Not sure, but I think it's post-Taisho. Let's flip to a couple more. They don't all have these kind of commentary on them. They're interesting, you know. I don't really like this kind of stuff, this this pasty pigmentation with the white stuff stuck on top. It's not to my taste. We ourselves will never start making prints like this. But they are, they're quite an accomplishment, you know. There's so many gradations, so many impressions. You know, you can see there's a gradation at the end of this thing on the cap. They are quite an accomplishment. It's part of Dave's same mood, you know, I like Tokyo, I like Edo, I would never go and live in Kyoto, not, not in a million years, not if you gave me a free house down there, would I go down there. And this is just, this is just Kyoto top to bottom. They're very stylized, very stylistic, they relate back to Heian era iconography. Some of the ones we saw yesterday had a, a Genji mark. These don't have Genji mark, but they relate back very much to a, an ancient era in Japan of the iconography. Beautifully done. My God, it's beautifully done. You know. Look at this. This is all woodblock print. There goes my streak. The amount of work to produce one of these is just beyond belief. The number of different blocks, the number of different impressions, the way the colors balance with each other. They are just over the top, unbelievable. It's hard to believe these are woodblock prints. You know, if I just sort of showed you this picture, you're going to be like, no way. But they are woodblock prints. We can see the cutting of the blocks. We can see the rubbing of the baron on the back. We can see the, the tamari on the edge, you know, everything. It's got all the signs of woodblock prints. And it's known these were woodblock prints. Look at this. We've got our standard shibori pattern, our tie-dye pattern. You know this to get the... It's a blue carved first, then squares are carved out, but the middle of each square must be left. Has this guy lost any? I don't think so. Looks like they're all there. How about down here? Did he lose any? They're lighter color, it's hard to tell. I don't see any holes. I think he didn't lose any. Just incredible, incredible work. Just an extra gradation here and there and here and there. Gradations up at the top here and there and here. It just never stops. Just never stops. This is fun. Do you see this one? If I zoom, just me zoom out just a little bit here. We've got gradations on these maple leaves. <coughs> so we've got a background color. We've got a background color first. Then we've got maple leaves. And how many blocks? You might think, okay, it's all one block for maple leaves. But if it's just one block, no, because you can't bang into the next part for a gradation. This leaf is not on the background block. This leaf is the background block. Put a gradation on the edge of it. These two are separate blocks. In fact, these three, one, two, three, would have been carved together on one block, and the guy would do a gradation one, two, three. And my guess, actually, now that I think about it, one, two, three, four, five, six. All six of those maple leaves would have been carved on one block, because you can see when he's tried to do the gradation here, it's okay. He moves across, does the gradation here, and it bumped into this block. So we ended up, there shouldn't have been a gradation here, but because they were carved side by side just for convenience, gradation here, gradation here, gradation here, oops, bumping in just a little bit. So to do that corner, it's one background block with a little bit of gradation, and then one second block with six maple leaves on it. Yeah, it's a scarecrow. It's a scarecrow. Pull out.
This one too, we saw this yesterday. Me and Kawai-san looked at this and we thought, wait a minute, what is going on? This is gonna be the last one we look at. Let's put the rest back in. Let's put them out of the way. This one. Okay, it's another picture in the same kind of style. It relates back to old traditional iconography. It's done with woodblock carving with uh, opaque colors. What's happening up at the top? This print isn't yet trimmed. Before going out into the world, it would be trimmed. Now let me get a piece of paper. And I'm guessing here, I think it would be trimmed somewhere like this. So it would be, it would have this typical Japanese top gradation along it. But we get a chance to see it now before the trimming and look at this. Let me zoom in and scan along this line. Any of you who know about woodblock printmaking, Karen, how do you do your gradations? This is darker, dark green. It gets a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter to, to the end. And what I think he has done is on the wood block for this, the wood block is actually larger. He's put some splashes of pigment, taken his brush across, like just maybe once, once or twice. There's no ju 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 because that would have spread these out altogether. We can see the splashes of pigment. So the splashes of pigment on the block, the guy's got his brush, and maybe one single pass. And it's pulled the pigment up on each one of these, paper down, and away he goes. And Kawai-san and I looked at this, and what is going on here? I never, ever, ever would have thought to see this, ever. We go back and forth and back and forth and rub it out and smooth it out and rub it out and rub it out and smooth it out and smooth it out, then put our paper on and print. And this guy has done it in what looks like a single stroke of his brush. We don't know, we sat and looked at this thing with our jaws on the floor. No idea. It would have been trimmed off before going out to the customer. As I said, this is the workshop. Before going out, they would have been trimmed off. And all the customer would have seen would have been the normal, normal gradation at the top. He doesn't see the sausage being made. But we can see the sausage here. I'm very, very, very curious as to how that sausage was made. So you got images to these. Okay, I am going to have a look at these images very much. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Koringami, or whoever, whoever has found these. Thank you very much. So this is treasure for us, absolute treasure. Finding prints that are not finished, that are partway through, prints that were rejected for some reason, prints that are test copies, proof copies. This is absolute gold for us. We can learn much more from a, a damaged print or from a partial print. We can learn much more from those than we can from the finished ones. There's something funny here too. Something's going on here. This I think is unfinished. No, these are not eyeballs. These are, uh, I would guess, these are some kind of rice cake. This is some kind of treasure ship. Uh, there's lots of iconography here, I do not know. We have our treasure hammer, we can see this, right? This is our hammer that's used by Daikoku. We have a purse, it's our standard takarabune. It's our treasure ship iconography. Pine, bamboo, and plum icon icons of the new year. The three here, P uh, plum, uh, pine, and bamboo. 
This is a ton of New Year iconography here. And again, same place registration is off. This is a proof sheet. There's registration off all over the place. The registration's off here. It's off here. Somewhere over here at the end of the boat. This is all off. Lots of it's off here. This is a proof sheet, clearly. So don't, don't diss these guys for misregistration. They're testing this at the moment. Okay, there we go, there we go. I know the, the box, the bag just keeps going down. I think altogether there are 29 prints in the bag here, and I really shouldn't tell you this, but I'm gonna tell you this, whatever, it costs us 710 yen. <laughs> Nobody wanted this auction. Nobody wanted it. It was an auction that just got passed up. I think we were the only bidder. Let me get the exact listing, hang on a sec. Yahoo auction, ones that we got. Here it is, here's the auction listing, 710 yen. And because nobody wanted it, it looked like junk. You know? And if you don't know what's going on, it is junk. There's the auction listing. Some of you can see it, some can't. So for us, it's absolute treasure, absolute treasure. We will learn so much from these. Okay, I have talked too much, I have talked too much. Out we go. Okay, I've got to grab a cup of coffee first. Uh, so the next stream will be Thursday morning for me, three days from now. I may be doing more of this clearing work, or I may be then doing more tracing on next year's series. I, I keep talking about this. I'm not teasing, I'm sorry, just I'm not sure day by day by day what I'm doing at any stage here. So i got to get out of here right now. Thank you very much. I'll see you again in a few days. Is it raining yet? I think it's still, it's trying to. It's raining a bit and stopping a bit on and off. It's going to be like that all the way, but heavy rain later this afternoon and tonight. Yep, I think that's all. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later, and bye for now. Look at his mask against his chin. This is the new way of walking outside now. I haven't been watching during the stream, but uh, I think most people are still masked, but a few people are trying to drop it. Okay, bye for now.